When I was in high school, I had a youth leader in our small church that discipled me. His name was Kurt DePue. Kurt was an accountant and he invested in me and he grabbed a couple of my friends and he led our youth group. But outside of youth group, he said, I want to I see something in these young men. I want to invest in them. And so outside of youth group, he would spend time with us and teach us things and share his wisdom and knowledge and pass it on to us. And we didn't know it at the time, but what Kurt DePue was doing was he was making disciples. Shortly after my wife and I got married, we got married in Florida. We were college students in Chicago. We made our long drive back and we got back to our little studio apartment in downtown Chicago. We opened the doors, we went to our kitchen. And I remember opening the fridge and the fridge was full of food. We opened the cabinets and the cabinets were full of non-perishable food items. And it, it dawned on us that we had just had the conversation on the drive back to Chicago of, oh, we, we're gonna have to go shopping when we get back. We were poor college students who were living on ramen and we had just gotten married and we're like, we're gonna have to fill up our cabinets when we get back. Because we, we didn't have anything waiting for us back. What it turned out was there was some neighbors a couple doors down named Heidi and Marty Hartley. And they saw us as this young couple. We were 20 and 22 when we got married. We didn't know what in the world we were doing. We didn't know what marriage awaited us. Um, and Marty and Heidi saw us and they said, hey, we're, let's do a Bible study with this couple. But more than just inviting them to Bible study, let's, let's do life with them. Let's rub shoulders with them. Let's meet some of the needs that this couple has. And so that began a relationship that has lasted 27 years. My wife and I have been married 27 years. And Marty and Heidi are really good friends of ours. But what they did, we didn't know it at the time, they discipled us in marriage. It was just the two of us, it was just two couples. And many times Marty and I would talk and Heidi and Crystal would talk about marriage and, and they would never talk about the other person with us, they would talk about us with with us, right? And so we were, we were discipled. There's been times in my life where God laid it on my heart, where I saw an individual, I saw a young man, I saw a student, and God said, hey, disciple this person. Now, a couple things about disciple making. As a church, our mission is we make disciples as we help people find and follow Jesus. But what does it mean to make disciples? Not every church makes disciples. Just because you have a church doesn't mean disciples are made automatically. And so there needs to be some thought behind making disciples. It's really a part, should be a part of our culture, right? And so what does it mean to make disciples? Well, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.2. Think of it this way, deuces wild, 2.2.2. That's how I remember it, 2 Timothy 2.2. It's one of my life verses. And Paul says to Timothy, the things that you've heard me teach you in front of many witnesses, find other reliable people that you can entrust who will then in turn teach others. Did you catch that? Paul discipled Timothy, but it didn't end there. Paul says to Timothy in the last book that Paul writes on his deathbed, if you will, the last final words of Paul is, hey, the things I've taught you Timothy, it's so important that you then pass it on to someone else who will pass it on to others. And so, Timothy, don't just make disciples, but be a disciple maker. There's a difference. If I make one disciple, that's addition. If I make disciples who make disciples, that's multiplication. And that's what I, I would pray for Boulder Mountain, that we would be a church that makes disciples. I can't disciple everyone. You can't disciple everyone. But can you disciple your son? Can you disciple your daughter? Can you disciple your grandchildren, nieces, or nephews? Can you disciple your spouse? Is there a student that you've met here at the church uh, that you could disciple, that you see something in them and you wanna spend time with them, you wanna invest in them? Now, let the youth leaders know that and there's a process, talk to the parents about that, right? Maybe there's another young man that you see attending church or a young woman you see attending church. Maybe you've met somebody in your new small group and God lays it on your heart to invest in them. Now, there's two types of disciple making. There's formal and informal, right? Both are necessary, both are needed. 
But what would it look like for you and I to learn God's word? Not just learn it, but to live it and then to pass it on to someone else. That's what disciple making looks like. Here at Boulder Mountain, we have an opportunity to be trained in disciple making at the end of or in the middle of February coming up here in about a month. It'll be a Saturday morning to have a deeper conversation about what it means to make disciples. It's the heartbeat of the final words of Jesus when he says, go and make disciples. What does that really mean? What does that look like? It's friendships. It's centered on God's word and it's investment of time. Go and make disciples. Listen, I've been blessed. I've been the recipient of someone discipling me. And now I get to disciple others. And my prayer would be that that would be true for, for everyone really at, at Boulder Mountain, that we would all be discipled. Let me pray. Good Father, thank you for the words of Jesus to Boulder Mountain to go and make disciples. Uh, teach us what that looks like. Give us opportunities. Holy Spirit, lay it on our heart, the who and the when, and give us the courage to follow through with what you're asking us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of your week.